Okay, so here's the premise. NVIDIA frame gen gets a deservedly bad rep. Like NVIDIA showing graphs where frames and fake frames are used interchangeably is, you know, deceiving at best. But after, you know, upgrading my system, which that video is coming out really soon, testing out through the past couple of weeks, one of these new 480Hz OLED monitors, um, frame gen is a godsend for way more situations than I expected it to be. We'll try two different games. We'll try Arc Raiders and we'll try the finals, an FPS and a third person shooter. Very different games and they have very different use cases for frame gen and I on one of them use it and on the other I do not. But the fact that I can say that you can run Arc Raiders at 480 FPS with any settings is an incredible experience on one of these panels. But there are some caveats that I think you should know, but over Overall, it is impossible not to be excited about playing on a system like this with this many frames per second, fake or not. Okay, so uh, we just spawned in, went to the into the practice range, and um, you can see up top I have the Steam overlay, and I really recommend the Steam overlay because it shows very clearly how many FPS do you actually have and how many of those frames are actually being generated or inferred between the frames that you can actually process. So at the top, you have the average FPS, uh, which is uh, the, the current FPS, which is 153. You have the lows and the highs right after, and then CPU usage, and then GPU usage on the right. And um, those are really the main focuses that you wanna keep your eye on. So right now, with the game fully maxed out, and if you go to the settings, you can clearly see um, I'm blind apparently. You can clearly see that it's maxed out 1440p DLAA, so it is as crisp as it can possibly be. And you get with a 5090 and a 9800X3D, you get around 150-ish FPS in this area of the testing range. Now, you don't necessarily need to run the game fully maxed out. If you were to lower this instead of it being to epic, if you just lower everything to high, most of it will still look the same and you get around the 50 FPS boost. Plus, I'm recording, so there's a bit of a bump to that, but just keep that in mind. 150 FPS is what we get right at the beginning of this test. And the game looks pretty damn dandy. Now, um, if you were to play this on an OLED monitor that can go up to 480 Hz, you'll have a pretty good experience. It's high frame rate, the game is third person, so even with a mouse and a keyboard, it will still be a really enjoyable experience. Now, if you were to enable frame gen, which when we take it to the right, it goes to auto, which um, it's 2x, it's the same as 2x. Um, you can see that there's a pretty significant impact on the performance. Now the jump from no frame gen to two times frame gen is on my system more than any other jump going forward uh, when it comes to the native FPS that you're getting. So you're actively losing around 25 FPS um, that you're actually processing, but then the game gives you 250. So that's the principle of frame gen, but why do I think this is so good? because no game apart from anything that's like competitive FPS can really max out these panels. This technique in games that support it and in games where you can actually really enjoy it, such as what I think is Arc Raiders, um, is what makes these panels great. And if you make the jump from uh, 2x to 3x to 4x, look at the top generated FPS and you get 440 FPS with a native frame rate that's still above 100 FPS. You get around 110 FPS and around 440 frames per second. Now, this will be significantly harder to show you in the video what it actually looks like in terms of fluidity and in terms of input delay, but what I can guarantee you is that for a third person shooter such as Arc, Reg Arc Legends, Arc Legends, what am I saying? Arc Raiders, um, you, this is an incredible experience. This is very, very, very buttery smooth. Now, okay, of course, Arc Legend, Arc, <laughs> my God, Arc Raiders still has some significant issues when it comes to the LSS and some ghosting, and this doesn't necessarily make those issues any less noticeable. Um, 
What this does, however, is make the game feel kind of unreal for a game that is this heavy. And you can make this feel even better, which is sometimes what I do, is if you want to just get even more FPS and be as close to the monitor and maybe even drop down uh, from four times to three times, you can drop this down to quality, drop this down to high, oops, not low, drop this down to high and knock this down to 3x. And that will still net you about the same amount of frames per second with lower resolution. But now you get natively 160 frames per second and the game, you know, it's, this is, this is the selling feature for these very high refresh rate OLED monitors. Like I know, I know the input delay is there, but honestly, if you gave people a blind test on a third person shooter, such as our graders, I don't think the average person would be able to um, effectively tell if this is um, frame gen or no frame gen. I don't think it's there for people to see. Now, I can say this for everyone. Like, to me, it feels really good. I've heard other people that sometimes I play with that have tried other versions of frame gen and they said they don't notice anything too much uh, with the AMD frame gen instead of the Nvidia frame gen. I can't really attest to that and I can't really attest to how the performance impact is on lower end GPUs. This is the best case scenario for this tech. This is what happens when you get a monitor with 480 Hertz OLED with very crisp motion clarity, meaning the pixels switch very, very quick. So the motion clarity is really, really impressive. And you put that together with the frame generation and you get close to 480 FPS. And uh, the experience is really, really, really great. And as for the less than good example, I'll give you the finals. Now, the finals is a significantly more competitive game in nature. It's first person shooter and you kind of are a little bit more in the flow of things. So I generally do not play with frame gen enabled. But I was curious, you know, I play with like semi optimized settings. I have some things dialed down and some things dialed up just so that I get, you know, enough visual candy whilst at the same time still keeping the game relatively light and easy to play. Sometimes I do the LSS quality, sometimes I do the LAA. The LAA is significantly cleaner, the image, and um, you get plenty of FPS and it's more than enough with an OLED monitor with crisp motion clarity to actually enjoy the game. 270 FPS here in the firing range usually translates to around 240-ish in game. Even with the LAA, the GPU is maxed out as you can see up top and our current FPS is 270. Now, if you were to consider frame gen for a game like this and you put it at 2x, 2x would drop you from what we had before on the native FPS of around 270-ish, 271, 270. And if you go to 2x, it's a drop of around 70 frames per second, which is significant. Like the drop isn't um, felt necessarily, and it's kind of comparable to what you see on Arc Raiders, but because of the nature of this being a first person game and you actually being much more into, I don't know what it is about the first person, but you can actually tell that something isn't quite there. Like there is increased input delay a little bit, but honestly, and I didn't wanna really admit this, but if I was to be honest and I had to play the game like this, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad gaming experience. Like if you're trying to eke out everything that you can, this isn't really the feature that you should uh, use from a competitive perspective. These monitors have, have an incredible feeling when you actually manage to max out the refresh rate. And even though I know that I don't need this and enabling three times frame gen, you can see up top, I'm all the way down to 178. So that's almost 100 frames per second less than I had in the beginning. So the impact is absolutely there, but the visual smoothness that you get with a feature like this and the fact that the input delay is still comparable to what you would get from simply playing the game at 180 FPS 
is kind of mind blowing to me. Like this is not, in my opinion, this is not the feature that's going to make unplayable games playable. This is not a magic feature that's gonna immediately make games enjoyable and perform great if they weren't already enjoyable and performing great to begin with. But the fact that all these monitors are coming out with insane sky high refresh rates makes it feel like you're, you're sort of missing something. It makes you feel like you kind of have to chase this impossible to reach number because remember, a ton of games are CPU limited or a ton of games don't really re reach these just incredibly high frames per second. But if this sort of tech reduces that sort of barrier to entry a little bit and you can actually manage to still be able to get the visual smoothness when you want to for certain people, I believe this is, this is incredible. And I believe the fact that a ton of the conversation about frame gen is focused around the th low FPS. You have, let's say you have around 45, 50 FPS and you suddenly click a couple of buttons and you make that 200. Um, I feel like that's kind of missing the point. And this is, I feel like one of the coolest, most impressive uses of, of technology that I've seen. And I would argue until you actually are able to see this in person and feel it through the mouse, uh, maybe reserve your opinions um, because this is, this is truly exciting and truly fun and um, much, much, much more playable from an input delay perspective than I, than I truly expected before. In conclusion, like frame gen gets a deservedly bad rep. And I think these incredible OLED panels that are pushing refresh rates that, you know, are impossible to attain with pretty much any game. I think this is a combo made in heaven. I really do believe that a lot of people are sleeping on this particular combination of unlocked FPS, and then you get a decent performance from the get-go as you can get with top tier hardware these days. And then you take what's anywhere from 15 to 28 or 27 ish percent of a performance hit and you convert those FPS to 480 very close to it. And the experience I really believe is great. Um, there is some input lag. Yes, I don't think is nearly, nearly as much as you actually think it is if you never tried this. And all of this is with a mouse and a keyboard on controller. I think this is great period. Um, nothing else to add. And I think if you ever get the chance to experience it, please do so. And um, I promise this will be, um, no, no, probably. <laughs> I was gonna say, I promise this will be the last time that I shill an NVIDIA feature, uh, but that's that's probably unlikely if, you know, it's something that I truly believe can be incredible with an asterisk. Definitely not how you see a ton of people looking at frame gen as free performance. It's definitely not free, but boy, does it pair well with all of these OLED monitors coming out today. Okay, I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much for watching and um, I hope to see you um, um, on my next video. Okay, bye.